South Dakota. The last stop on mine and Keith's mission to complete the Grand Slam. The Merriam Turkey is the only one we had left. Uh, after a successful Rio hunt in Oklahoma, all we needed was the Merriam. Got to South Dakota uh, and met with our guide, Nate Sobineski. That first evening, we went in, he dropped us out, and we went straight to hunting. Uh, got set up that evening. Not much went on. We found a little sign, found where they might have been roosting, uh, set there for the remainder of the evening. Attempting to roost one, but we were plagued with bad weather uh, the whole time we were there, basically. We had, well, the weather wasn't horrible, but the wind was awful. We had no less than 20 mile an hour winds. Uh, unless we got down, we noticed that when we got down in these canyons or in these valleys, that the wind was almost nothing down there compared to on top. So that first evening, not much went on. We couldn't even hear one to roost one. But uh, luckily our guide knew of a spot where he, and he had actually seen some birds roost that evening in an area. Uh, that's one good thing about Nate. Uh, you know, we liked the way that he did this hunt. He didn't just take us to his place and lead us in there and hold our hand. He knew where the turkeys were and he put us there. And he let us use our own tactics, our, our own hunting styles. Uh, he did not go with us, he dropped us out. And that's what we wanted. We wanted to be able to go to a place where there are plenty of birds and just do our thing. Had the first day, then not much happened. And the next morning after Nate had roosted some birds that evening for us, went back in, got down there, heard birds gobbling everywhere, and uh, got set up on one. It was breaking daylight. It broke daylight so fast out there. Uh, we didn't have much time to get him where we would have liked to have been. We set up and started making some calls. He answered, and uh, from that it was just a show, and I'll, I'll show you all that right now.
stick its head up. <laughs> oh well, marry him down. Grand Slam! Grand Slam! Hey. That's pretty, that was perfection. Perfection, wasn't it? Grand <laughs> Slam, baby! It's good for you. You didn't want to set up here. <laughs> that was too far away. He ain't got much beard, does he? A mature bird. Full fan makes mature bird, don't it? Yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> He's a Marion. So I'm full fan. It's your bird. That's what we've told. Right? Oh yeah, so yes. What grand slam for Keith? <laughs> Four different five states. Huh? Ah, we'll go get. We're gonna go try to get me one. Let's roll. He said to come. He said to come out. Let's don't. Let's go watch the on the bird. All right. What are you gonna do with your bird? I wouldn't leave it neither. I'm saying that's what I'm saying. He said we'd he'd take us to. Let's get a real quick picture. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Where are you going to go? We'll have to leave. Go back over this and over here. See what it's doing. We can do that. It's only going to come a long way. They said it would, though. Yeah. All right, well, it's the first morning in South Dakota. Uh, out here on the Pine Ridge Indian Reservation. Uh, come out here yesterday evening, hunted, didn't hear or see nothing. But we was able to roost some yesterday evening and uh, come in here on them and heard a lot more than what we thought that was in here. And uh, come in here and got set up on one. Went to call and he come in on a string. So uh, that's Keith's Grand Slam. He just completed it. It's also the fifth state he's killed a bird in this year, so he's on the roll, but we're going to see if we can swap places. Maybe I can get my Grand Slam finished out now. we got another evening. we got tomorrow. we got Friday morning, but the weather's going to be just get worse, progressively worse. Uh, it's not going to get no better. So it's going to get real cold the last couple days. The wind's not going to stop, so uh, we're going to get out of here. We're going to try to find our guy that's... Uh, been sort of taking us around and he's a it's pretty neat they just sort of drop you off and give you free range what you want to do so it's been pretty nice so far but uh he got some more places he's going to try to take us didn't know how it's to tell i told keith it was a full fan so we shot and that's what it is it's a full fan tom they said that some of these things don't get very big of beards don't get very big of spurs all you can go by is that fan, ain't it? That's right. Full fan. Full fan, mature bird, what they told us. So, marry them down. Perfection. Work to perfection. Perfection this morning. Done its thing. Tried to get some film, but it happened kind of quick. It's a little dark still. It's dark when that thing was coming off the hill. But, got one down. First marry them I've got to lay my hands on. Kobe killed one last year. I didn't get to see it. He done had it bagged and tagged. But, uh, she got her done in South Dakota. So, go get me one, see if we can. If not, it's been good either way. Got Rio's two, a couple days ago. Now we got to marry him. So, 10 4. Thank the Lord. It's been good. And like I said in the video, uh, it was different. 
you know, around around home here, you know, if it ain't got a swinging beard, it's it's a Jake. You know, unless something something bizarre has happened. Uh somehow it's got pulled out or something like that. I've never seen that myself. I'm sure it's happened, but you can tell a Jake pretty easy around here, or you can tell a Jake gobble. Uh, out there, it was totally different. You know, a short little beard did not necessarily mean that it was a Jake. And uh, we had to go by the fan. That's what the locals told us out there last year. Uh, that's what our guide told us. You know, go by the fan. So we noticed this beard was, we noticed when this bird came in that his beard wasn't that great. You know, it wasn't no huge swinging beard, but when he blowed up, he had a full fan. And that's what we went by. Keith put him down. And uh, that was it. That was his slam. He was done. It was a great moment. Uh, we were excited. That was the first Merriams I'd ever laid my hands on. So it was very exciting, and we were ecstatic. And uh, but then it was my turn. So from there, we met back up with our guide, with Nate. I'm just going to say Nate. Uh, super awesome dude, by the way. I'll tell y'all some more about him later. But met back up with Nate. He said, hey, let's stay in this area. Let's move on down this uh, bottom of ways. And there was a lot more birds we heard that morning. We sort of wanted to give it a shot setting up on some of them. So we went down the bottom of ways and we got set up and uh, sat there for a little while and done some calling and one answered. And uh, I want to show that footage. It was awesome footage. He actually came in twice. This bird came in one time went around us. Keith really had a problem getting on him. Uh, he couldn't see the camera lens. But we called him back in after that. And uh, of course this was by the fan even. We could tell this was a Jake. Did not have a full fan so we just got to watch him. Uh, it was awesome to see. And he gobbled. You can't even tell the difference in the gobble. He had such a good gobble. Uh, he sounded like every other bird we heard. So uh, all you go by was the fan, but I'll show that. Right, folks, he, he's right in the middle of it. Middle of what? This, this tree's got about three forks. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's right through it, right there. See? Okay, yeah. see? No, I don't see him. I 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 can't get him. I don't know if I can. Don't, I don't worry about it. I'm going to call one more time. I'm going to call one more time. You don't see them decoys.
so after that, uh, we loaded up and was going to go try a new spot. And also, Nate was going to show us some other places that if it didn't work out where we were heading, uh, he was just going to let us go to them. You know, drop, we dropped pins. And uh, if it wouldn't have worked out where we were going, he was, he was going to let us just go to those pins. You know, it, it's pretty laid back. It's the way we wanted it to be. And, uh, but this place we went, he set us out. We started walking off into a big valley. Uh, this is a more canon or canyony looking place, I guess you could say. It had, you know, he's up more in some higher country. Uh, it looked a lot like the Black Hills that I hunted last year, but had some camera trouble. The main camera battery actually died. Uh, I didn't explain to Keith that you can't leave the camera running constantly. It will die. And uh, he didn't realize that, you know, he. You know, he thought if he wasn't recording, it wouldn't drain the battery, but it will. But uh, he didn't know that, so we did have a, a GoPro for backup, and I've, we've got some footage on that. Uh, I'll just explain it. This bird was, he was gobbling a little to a call, but he had a ton of hens. It was him and one other strutter, and they had a ton of hens. And uh, these birds are, in this way, they're a lot like Easterns. You know, when they're henned up, they're henned up. And uh, unless you catch them at the right time, I don't see them. I didn't see any of them uh, act like they was going to leave the hens. So I just put the old-fashioned bushwhack on him. Uh, he got in behind some stuff, and there was a horse corral sort of down in that in that canyon bottom. And they got in behind it, and it gave me a chance to sort of belly crawl up to a log that was laid down. And so... Uh, I crawled up to that log and I ranged a few trees and I could see they were kind of working their way back out to where I was and I knew if they'd step out in front of this one or two trees there I'd have a 60 yard you know shot and he the one of the strutters did he stepped out in the open and we didn't get the shot on camera uh, Keith he, he hung back from me I should have probably took the GoPro with me but I just wanted to get it done and uh he, he walked out, I ranged him, I had a chance to range him, he was 60 yards on the dot. I cut at him, he stuck his neck up, shot him. And that was it, super excited. Uh, my Grand Slam was done, it was super awesome. Uh, and uh, couldn't be more thankful for the opportunity to go after these birds and to do this, but uh, it was just a, it was just a, Super exciting moment for both of us to be done with our slam. And uh, yeah, so I'll, I'll show a little of that. Keith holding the GoPro battery on the main camera went dead so did not get this shot on camera I had to sort of bushwhack it uh, hens wouldn't let it come to us so I went to belly crawling I think Keith got a little of that on the GoPro but uh, got within 60 yards of him and uh, was able to put a shot on him so tickled to death got my memory and my grand slams done uh, I think me and Keith might have another plan for tomorrow Maybe get another, but uh, ten four, marry them down, two marry them down. We thank the Lord for letting us do it. But uh, we're gonna get out of here and maybe make another plan or head to the house one. So ten four, here we ten go. Four. So after that, we're done with our slam, and it, these two hunts we had been hunting on the Pine Ridge Indian Reservation, but uh, Nate had some land off the reservation that if we had a tag, we could hunt it with a bow, but Keith managed to get a crossbow tag. So uh, we thought, you know, we'd try to get Keith one more off the reservation there, and uh, we drove to Rapid City, picked up the tag, headed back, and the next morning when we got out there and got set up, there were so many birds. It was unreal, all the birds that we seen. 
and to all the birds we heard, we didn't see. The only problem was we had one arrow. The, uh, Nate let us borrow his crossbow, and he went that night to buy more broadheads for us, but they were sold out. So we had one shot uh, at killing one of these birds, and you know that's just how it goes. Sometimes that was it. So, uh, but it was a cool experience.
house if anything else say so. There she was, there she was. She's right there. Bush back with a bow. Then shotgun one. Oh, shotgun ain't been over. tried. No cigar. Hey, Keith. Keith, take this, take this range finder and see if that ain't 70 yards. And you shot under him. Huh? You shot under him? Sure enough, give it a good try anyway. We got a couple of. Yeah, he was at 70 on that no. I'm telling you, I was, I was, I was dead on on that range. Oh yeah, 69 right there at that no. Try your best. <laughs> so, so, oh, you hit a bunch of hens. We got cats and our knees and everything. Anyway, we give it a good shot. <laughs> a little different carrying a crossbow. Anyway, tempo, it was fun. Yeah, it's fun. I do want to talk about Nate just for a second. Our guide's name was Nate Sobineski. Uh, you can look him up on Facebook. You can Google him. That's actually how I found him, just Googling him. And not him specifically, but if you Google, you know, Pine Ridge, any reservation, turkey hunts, he pops up. It's Sobos LLC, S-O-B-O LLC, Sobos. And you can find, it's, you can look him up under Sobos LLC, I'm sure you can look up Sobo's Outfitting, Sobo's uh, Outdoors, Sobo's Guiding. Uh, I'm sure he'll pop up under any of those. But if you look up Sobo's LLC on Instagram, Facebook, or Google, he pops up. Uh, awesome guy. He's a super awesome guy. 
he guided us exactly how we was hoping. You know, he gave us so much freedom uh, to hunt how we wanted to hunt. And it was exactly what I was hoping for. I've not been on a lot of guided hunts. I've only been on two or three, really. It was an awesome experience. And if you want to turkey hunt, mule deer hunt, whitetail hunt, uh, bison, pronghorn, prairie dog, like he does it all. He does all these different types of hunts. And if you're looking to go out there to South Dakota and have a great time and be put on game and be in just a great area and uh, be around a great guy, you need to look up Sobos LLC. I would recommend him to anybody. Uh, if I ever get the chance to go back, I will call him. Uh, I would love to go out there and do a mule deer hunt with him. An elk hunt, he does elk hunts. Uh, I mean, it's where he's from. Uh, everybody knows him. Everybody we asked around that area or told that we were hunting with him, they knew him and they all loved him. He's a great guy and uh, he's doing a lot of good things out there. Not just in hunting, he's doing a lot of good things for veterans. He's a vet himself, uh, but you need to look him up if you ever want to go out there. And especially, I'm experienced. If you want to go kill a Merriam, he's your guy. If you want to go to South Dakota and you want to kill a Merriam, he is the man to call. Uh, he knows where the birds are at and he will put you on them. But he went above and beyond, showed us all the places, took us everywhere showed us around, let us, you know, mark places with our pins on Onyx. And uh, the way he set everything up and the way he guided us, just knowing where the birds were and dropping us out, that was awesome. It was perfect for the way we wanted to do things. And I would recommend him to anybody. And, uh, but Sobo's LLC, y'all need to look him up. Go out there, he'll treat you right. Thanks for watching. Uh, we've got some more videos coming up from back here in North Carolina. We got a couple more uh, birds put down since I got back and I got some good footage of them. So y'all be on the lookout for that. Thanks for watching.